trustees. This is a regular meeting and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience for guest form and follow the instructions on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, and make policy and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values. And we appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. All right. We would like to now bring up Collins Intermediate School, and I will introduce them. We have Molly Medina, Grayson Smith, Euridzi Castro, Adeline Vicara, and London Olson, and they're going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the U.S. and Texas flags. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now to the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Thank you so much. You. Appreciate it. Now we're going to be led in invocation by Dr. Danny Reeves of First Baptist Church. Thank you so much for inviting me back. Let's bow our heads together and let's pray. Father, we uh, thank you so much this evening for the privilege uh, to be in this place, in this community, and Lord, certainly in this season. And um, Father, we give you praise in this season that our hearts just turn directly to Christ. And Jesus, we thank you that you left the glories of heaven. We thank you that you took on the form of, of humanity. And Father, we are very, very grateful tonight that we are able to speak the name of Jesus in this room, in this place, and over our schools. And God, tonight, on in the name of Jesus, I ask that you would be with every one of the students in our school system. Uh, we praise you for everyone. We praise you for the life that they bring into our community and our homes and our families. And we pray that you keep them safe. We pray that you would use our school system, Lord, to allow them to reach their potential, not only as students and in academics, but also in life. And Father, I also pray for our teachers. We praise you, God, for everyone that was called to this profession. And we ask that you would use them for your glory, that you would give them incredible insight, that you would give them creativity, that you would give them perseverance. And Father, that you would just continue to give them a passion uh, that you have called them to to invest in the lives of our children. And Father, last, I pray for our administration, Lord, and, and those that sit before us tonight, those in this room. Lord, I pray that you would give them wisdom, and we know that you remind us in Scripture that if we need wisdom, that we can ask for it, and you provide it abundantly. So, Lord, on behalf of all of these here, I ask that you would give them wisdom that comes from heaven. Lord, we love you. Uh, we thank you that we are a school system where we don't ban you from these moments but we invite you to be a part. And so, Lord, we ask you to be in our school system. We ask you to be in our classrooms, and we pray this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you. <coughs> All right, to the superintendent's report. Well, we hope everyone had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Our family certainly did. Our students and staff returned today, and we have about four weeks of instruction before our winter break. So we know this is going to be four productive and fun weeks ahead of us. We want to thank um, our district attorney, Will Thompson, and Donna um, Castor, who is with a not-for-profit called um, Going Ballistic, um, for a donation that we received just prior
prior to the board me the board meeting tonight um, is for a shield that was donated to our police department and um, certainly that is something that is um, very expensive um, it's through the combined effort of three different um, organizations um, the one I mentioned earlier as well as graceful uh, the graceful giving foundation um, for mr. Thompson and so thank you very much for that donation to our district we want to uh, come in and celebrate Alexis Semiango who recently qualified for state in the UIL State Student Congress he debated for six hours at a regional competition um, before qualifying for the state meet it's scheduled in January so congratulations Alexis um, our restock the wraparound pantry kicked off today if you look in the hallway outside we already begun to stack our um, canned goods and our non-perishables under our tree so we hope our we hope to fill our food pantry um, we're having a friendly competition between our campuses if they meet their goals they will get to wear jeans the last week before we get out for the holidays and um, we encourage our families and our students to participate in this and we're looking forward to um, to restock in this pantry our Corsicana ISD choral department is performing a Corsicana Christmas at 2 p.m. this Saturday at the high school it's a free event it features our choirs from every campus um, in the district and it's one of our community highlights to, that we um, use to celebrate the season we encourage everybody to attend we are looking forward to the kickoff for Jungle Java, which has been a vision of um, Lori Watson in our special ed department. It's going to be um, run by some of our um, special students from the high school, and we are going to see it around town and on the campuses and maybe kick off at a board meeting one night. Um, but that's going to be coming up very soon, so we're really excited to give our students this opportunity. As you know, um, she works with our students who are ready to leave high school and transition into the workplace so this is going to be a fun thing that our district is going to be able to have rehearsals are continuing for our next penguin project production which is the little mermaid performances are december 15th and 16 16th at corsicana high school the penguin project gives our students with different disabilities or different opportunities um, as miss crow liked us to say in which i prefer um, the wonderful chance to shine on stage um, they are the leads in this in the play and um, some of our other students are the student mentors it's a wonderful project and it's a wonderful experience and we encourage our public to attend and let our penguins touch your hearts thank you all right thank you very much now we're going to go into the discussion action items and first up on the agenda is the Navarre County Central Appraisal District ballot. Well, we have 1,370 votes and um, I think you discussed splitting your votes with 800 allocated to um, probably Father Monk who really um, does a great job in representing the interest of the district and then the remainder on some of the other um, very qualified, highly qualified candidates for the other places. Um, I know that our, our, our two had always been Father Ed and Rosie Trevino to um, represent the school district. So I would make a motion, or I move that we cast um, the 800 votes for Father Ed Monk and then 570 votes for Rosie Trevino. There's a motion. Is there a second? A second. We have a motion and a second to nominate um, Father Monk for 800 of our 1,370 votes and Rosie Trevina for the remaining 570 for the Navarro County, County Central Appraisal District. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. The ayes have it, and 800 votes will go to Father Ed Monk, and 570 will go to Miss Rosie Trevina. All right, next will be the affordable housing presentation. Is our representative here? I don't think the, I don't think the representative is here um, I'll just say a couple of things about this presentation it's something that um, I saw at a conference and um, I think it's really 
wonderful and really interesting because it has to do with recruiting teachers and staff. Um, school districts across the state are moving into this area because it's it's a recruiting tool. It's um, affordable housing for um, the staff members. Of course, you can't provide it to everybody who wants it, so that it has to be done on a first come, first serve basis. And I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure why he's not here, but um, we will get back in touch with him and we'll have him here at another board meeting. Okay, and then we go to subsection C, review of the facility survey and campus meetings. Well, I don't know, um, I hate to speak for the board members, but I've watched the board members and I've experienced myself the lunches that we've been doing on campuses to hear information from our staff members about the needs on the different campuses. I think it's been really fun. I've watched y'all enjoy yourselves in talking to our teachers and our staffs and touring our campuses. Um, so I'm just going to say that this has been a really fun thing that we've never done before, but I think we've all learned a lot. Um, we did a survey. Um, over the past couple of weeks right before Thanksgiving and we sent it to our staff members on campuses. We received 342 responses which is an excellent return on a survey. Of these responses, 254 were teachers, there were 20 administrators, 14 counselors, and 54 auxiliary or, para or paraprofessional staff. So we received um, 104 from the high school. It's interesting how these return numbers reflect the level of needs on campuses too. So we received 104 from the high school, uh, 37 from the middle school, 36 from Collins, 21 from Bowie, 33 from Carroll, 25 from Fannin, and 56 from Navarro, and 30 from San Houston. I'll send you all this data. Um, so another section of this was the staff was asked to rate um, from one being poor to five different facility areas of the campus. And so I'm just going to summarize this by campus for you. Um, the high school staff prioritized restrooms, which is no surprise to anyone, um, water, water fountains, and the water that goes on, it goes into the campus, and then a, having a common area for the staff. Um, that was their top three. The middle school really felt like that their campus was fine. And I appreciated what the middle school teachers, the, the whole attitude of the middle school staff in saying that we have the new campus. We really are not a priority. Everybody can always find something that they'd like to have improved, but they said we're really not a priority. But our students go to the high school and they see what the condition is there and it's really kind of it's really kind of a shock to them going from a newer middle school campus to the high school campus. So they were very gracious in their comments. Um, Collins talked about um, the playground and the area um, where students had PE and then the restrooms on that campus along with the heat and air conditioning. We really did struggle this summer to keep the heat and air conditioning going and um, where it was comfortable for our students and our staff at Collins. Billy talked about the restrooms on campus, the playground, and also the common area for the staff. Um, Carol talked about the playground, the restrooms, it just reversed the order, and then the common area for staff. Bannon talked about restrooms. It seems to be a common theme. Navarro also prioritized restrooms as their number one need. Bannon also talked about the roofing and then the children's playground. And Navarro talked about the playground and then the heat and AC. Um, interesting to note that at Navarro, our second newest campus, um, which is not new anymore at all, um, their scores overall were above a three. And so I think once that we we look at the restrooms, playground, heat, and AC, um, those are the three areas that they were they were somewhat concerned about. And then at San Houston, they talked about the playground area and then um, not having labs for students to use for science and um, technology, and then the restrooms on that campus as well. And so just a couple of summary comments. Um, overall, the restrooms um, and all the campuses of the district are a major concern. 36% of the respondents listed them as the number one priority on the campus. So I think that tells you a third, over a third, a 
think that tells you what you need to know about restrooms. Um, classroom updates are also needed. They talked about the flooring of classrooms. And, you know, we used to um, put down carpeting. And now that's the trend is really moving away from carpeting because of health concerns and, and cleaning issues. And then most of the campuses um, wrote very positive comments about the safety and security on their campuses. And they focused on issues with the playground fencing and then the open walkways on campuses. So this is a great start to helping us prioritize. Um, we have three more campuses to do the visits and lunches. Um, this week we'll be at Collins, Fannin, and Sam Houston. And then we'll go back around to the campuses. Um, I'll let the principals know about staff meetings where we'll talk about what we found from the survey on their campus and then what they saw as their needs and then listen to our teachers and other staff members to elaborate on any questions questions that they might have about the survey and the results of the survey for their individual campus. We good with that? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, ju I just would say that I think that um, to me the most interesting thing has been um, how far advanced we are in safety and security. Um, I think that we knew and, um, you know, this level of staff knew that that had been such a priority to us over you know the last decade or a little less but um, it's it was very reassuring for our teachers to tell us that's that's not our biggest concern we feel good you know they all have continually said that to me thank you we feel safe you know and so I think that that's been good for us to hear that we made that a priority we're not catching up we're way ahead of the game way ahead of the game all these schools that are having to catch up we don't have to do that so you know, we knew the restrooms were bad, and I think it was it's also given us a chance to talk to them about how this funding happens. You know, I think that some people are just unaware that we can't go get a loan to do this, you know, and, and, and some of these things we can't do. We Our hands are tied without the option of the bond. So I think that's been a really good, you know, a chance for us to have those conversations. And also the playground. A lot of them are, mis you know, we can't do the playgrounds like you think we can. So I think they've been really great. I appreciate you letting us do it and look forward to more. Anyone else? I really appreciate doing it too. I mean, I thought it was eye opening, even though I didn't get to make all of them that I wanted to. <laughs> but I mean, I just, I'm, I'm blown away by the middle school. I thought that, I thought that was amazing how they were so forthcoming and wanting to give it to the high school. So I love it. I love Brad it. And I talked to a lot of them at the middle school, and they were like, really, we feel safe. We, we can't even, please don't focus on us. You know, focus on the high school. Yeah. They all said that. Well, good. All right. We're moving on into consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion for that. I move we approve consent agenda as presented. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to approve consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it, and we've approved the consent agenda. We do have an audience for guests. Mr. Terry Garner, if you'll come forward. Did I say it right? You said it right. All right. So I do have to read this little script, okay? And then we'll let you speak, okay? And it's long, and I apologize. It's quite all right. Whew. All right. The CISD Board of Trustees encourages comments about the district from citizens of the district, from district employees, or from other members of the public. Anyone wishing to speak may do so at this time. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to public education and be no longer than three minutes per person. The board also respectfully requests that the speaker refrain from mentioning other students or parent and staff members' names when addressing their concerns. Under the Texas Open Meetings Act, the board is not permitted to discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on the agenda for tonight's meeting. This means that the board members are unable to deliberate, ask questions, provide you with a response, or take any action relating to your comments. If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board's deliberation of the issue will be deferred until the appropriate time during the meeting. In addition, the board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought by the employees, students, or parents may be brought in accordance with our local school board policy. Each of these processes provides 
if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of our district policy on the public participation in meetings and filings complaints can be found on our website. If you need assistance with these policies or processes, please call Merrill Harrison in the superintendent's office. So, Ms. Kelly here, she will be your timer for three minutes and she'll give you a one minute warning. So whenever you start speaking, we'll start timing. Thank you very much and thank you for the opportunity to speak and thank you for what you do. And congratulations on being School Board of the Year. I know that we're in, a, we're in good hands. What I'm here to talk about tonight is bullying. Bullying in CISD is a very bad problem currently. Uh, my child was jumped on the school bus, first year on the school bus in fourth grade at Bowie. She was jumped. We, we did not find this out from the school. We found this out from somebody else. We went straight the next morning to Collins where the student attends. The principal was very receptive to what we had to say. The CISD uh, police officer was very receptive to what we had to say and took our report. Within five hours, called us back, saw the video of what happened on the school bus. Uh, we wanted to press charges. Your local DA does not want to press charges against kids. Uh, this kid grabbed my kid and gave my kid a concussion. Okay, so we've had medical bills. Um, we've been bullied since kindergarten at Bowie. It's noted in her file. Uh, this particular action required us to want to press charges because our kid was grabbed and hit in the head multiple times. There is video to this, all right? Your, your staff did a great job. What I'd like to talk about is in the beginning of every school year since we've been in Corsican ISD, which is since kindergarten, they do a great job in the beginning of the school talking about to the kids about how we treat each other and how we respect each other. But they only do that for one or two weeks, right? I want to encourage you to encourage Dr. Frost and the staff, how do we continue those conversations throughout the whole year? Okay, because one or two weeks is not working. I mean, we've been told about gay parents. She's been bullied because she had a mustache. We got beat up on the day our grandmother died in third grade. Uh, we got beat up in the fourth grade on the school bus, okay? This one was the end of it. And when the DA refused to prosecute, there's a problem, okay? The other student is a known bully. Older, bigger, built like a boy. Okay, she should have been prosecuted so the parents could be held accountable. Until we hold other parents accountable, this is not going to happen. Okay, so how do we give more education to kindness in the school district? Because they do a great job in the beginning of the school district. But after two weeks, that's over with. And then it just, it gets worse and goes downhill from there. And with the more break sweat we're having, we're seeing even more. The kid come home today talking about a kid talking about she had a, a crazy hairline. Really? How do we get these kids to learn to respect each other? We've got to add it into the curriculum. All right? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. Is there any is there any more, Ms. Harrison? Yes. So I have to read this again. Yeah. All right, because she wasn't here when I read it. All right. Is it Saray Sir Curie? Yes, okay. I've got to read this again, okay, before you before you go, okay? The CISD Board of Trustees encourages comment about the district from citizens of the district, from district employees, or from other members of the public. Anyone wishing to speak may do so at this time. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to public education and be no longer than three minutes per person. The board also respectfully requests that the speaker refrain from mentioning other students or parent and staff members' names when addressing their concerns. Under the Texas Open Meetings Act, the board is not permitted to discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on the agenda for tonight's meeting. 
This means that the board members are unable to deliberate, ask questions, provide you with a response, or take any action relating to your comments. If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board's deliberation of the issue will be deferred until the appropriate time during the meeting. In addition, the board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought by employees, students, or parents may be brought in accordance with their local school board policy. Each of these processes provide that if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as a properly posted agenda item. Copies of our district policy on public participation in meetings and filing complaints can be found on our website. If you need assistance with these policies or processes, please call Merrill Harrison in the superintendent's office. Okay. Ms. Kelly will give you the timer for three minutes, okay? And she'll give you a, a one-minute warning. Okay, so, I'm sorry. <laughs> Too tall. Um, I just, as, as y'all know, I came to talk about um, the renovation of the school and things like that about a month ago. And I would just have, I have two questions. First, um, I just want to know, where is the follow-up, like, do y'all guys have a plan about what are y'all going to um, do to finish the renovation of the school or update the school in any kind of shape, um, shape way, or form? And I had another question. How will y'all or will y'all um, implement the students in that process, or will it be just determined directly on you guys? Um, another thing I want to talk about is just from a perspective, Five o'clock, um, I know this has been mentioned many, many, plenty of times, but just the, uh, just the time of the meetings, five o'clock, I feel like, of course, I know a lot of people, a lot of other people feel like it's way too early, I'm a student. Um, I barely got the bus and make it home about 4.40, let alone come up here. So then my friend, my peer, she, last time we came to talk, she gets out of practice at 5.30. So if students can't make it, how can, people who work full-time jobs make it or even try to make it and then just the fact of three minutes to talk I feel like personally I feel like it's kind of intimidating or just three minutes so I can kind of say what I want to say or maybe forget what I want to say or something like that that's just how I look at it maybe it's not if it's not my apologies but that's how I see it and I wish that would be a little longer because if a uh, parent is coming with a problem first they should be able to make it in a timely manner and like um what was said was before, I'm not going to say who said it, but districts around start their school board meetings at least 6, 6 7.30, sometime where the parent can get off work and be able to make it and talk about issues that they have with their children. Um, what else? Mm, that's it, but I just wanted to say um, I hope something it, um, will be done. Like this is a, like I said, an urgent problem. The school does not look its best, and we all know that. It's not no secret, and something needs to be done immediately. Thank you, Ms. Curry. If you'll if you'll wait after, uh, any of us will be happy when this is over okay. to address all okay. that with you. We can't during this meeting, but we're happy to explain how it okay. works with you. Mm -hmm. Is there anybody else from here? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. All right, now we're going to adjourn into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551.01. Thank you.